In Dungeons and Dragons, there are more than just dragons and dungeons. In fact, you can even find some time to relax and celebrate. And if you're looking to celebrate, we've got a great supplement for you. This is Festivals, Feasts, and Fairs by Ashley May. Welcome everyone, I'm Sean, this is Tony, and today we're looking at Festivals, Feasts, and Fairs by Ashley May. Yeah, now this is a great thing because sometimes you're tired of going out and getting eaten by a gelatinous cube. Yeah. You're tired of going out and being eaten by the dragon. Sure. You're tired of going to kill ten rats. Sometimes yeah. Sometimes you want to party. And sometimes the rats will eat you too, though. So yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. The whole Stranger Things thing. With oh, the- yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Um, but this one, this supplement is actually a really awesome thing because it gives you uh, flavor and things that you can do to throw a festival. Yeah, and it's important to throw these kinds of things into your campaign because, you know, we do have the dungeon crawl and we do have the tavern and we do have all these things that you can typically go through in a story. But having these celebrations and holidays and, and these events, mm-hmm. it really helps flourish and flavor your world by adding these, you know, historical events that, like, people celebrate. Yeah, I mean... You have gods in your world. You have these things that are there. There has to be a day that celebrates the gods. I mean, we have days that celebrate the gods here. And it's it's a similar thing. I mean, if you put these things into your campaign, you start developing your background and your story for your players so they feel that they're part of the world, not just some person in it. Not to mention, it kind of gives your players something fresh to do. Uh, I mean, I've run into the situation where, like, maybe we're just fighting a bunch of stuff or we're just traveling all the time. By tossing in, like, little celebrations or, or games or things like that, uh, it gives your players a chance to kind of think outside the box rather than just trying to roll dice all the time. Uh, it's something to help really kind of just, you know, mix things up in your story to make things more interesting. Oh, God, I would love to see what your jester would put on for a oh, carnival kind it would, of thing. it would be a treat. Well, you know, like, it'll be, well, <laughs> it'll be a lot of riddles probably. But, yeah. You know, well, I mean, you don't I want to get them wrong. This thing is chock full of great, uh, great things to add to it. Not only does it kind of show you the types of festivals that you would have, like a circus coming to town, a fair, a feast, a festival, or a holiday, um, but depending on what area you're in, kind of determines what there is that's coming to town. Yes. Like, if you, if you have a small village... You're not going to have a petting zoo. Probably not. They pet their own sheep. Yeah, or that sheep's probably going to turn to a sweater one day. So Yeah. You know. Well, I mean, yeah, and lunch. That's but, um, <laughs> but it, And it's really great because Ashley goes into so much detail with every single uh, celebration and everything. So depending on what you're actually doing, there's so many different things that you can toss in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you can, yeah, you can do the petting zoo or you can also toss in like, you know, acrobats. And uh, trained and, animals. Yeah, exactly. How, who doesn't love a bear on a unicycle? Yes, they're more than just being a familiar. They have other, <laughs> uh, you know, uses as well. Um, the one thing I did want to look at really quick, uh, mm-hmm. and something that I used, and I think we've both used this at least once in our campaigns, is a, is a fortune teller. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, fortune tellers, you know, I mean, like, whether or not they're actually honestly telling their fortune, these sometimes these make some of the best NPCs that I've ever ever used in a campaign. Cross my palm with silver, and I will tell you your <laughs> yes. fortune. Oh, yeah. That's the reason I love the beginning of the Curse of Strahd, mm-hmm. because it's right. the same thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, you do the tarot reading for everyone. And it's 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 got this kind of mysticism to it, and it's a lot of fun. She includes how many different ways in this? Oh, boy. One, two, three, four, five, six different yes. types of, of uh, fortune it's tellers. Each one using a different method to actually tell the fortune. And thankfully, she does detail exactly how it would happen. In fact, for the uh, the tassiography one, you know, this tea is a, the tea leaf reading. Yeah. They actually have a chart that gives you. Um, you know, a D100 roll on the different things that you can actually come up with. So that yeah. like, if you roll and you get like a, a flint and tinder or a sword or a mule, there's a symbol for every single one. And while this may not actually have, you know, a gameplay mechanic to it, it's just kind of fun to kind of <laughs> toss this at your players, you know, give them a chance to like explore their character, explore their story and interact with the party. Now, you mentioned gameplay. There's games in oh, here, too. Oh, there's games, yeah. And I, I, she has been very prolific with some of the things that are in here. I mean, we've got a, a, a bucking bull. You've got the strongman contest. You've got... Uh, oh, the, the, my favorite one is, is the rigged... There's a rigged milk jug toss yeah. in there. Then there's a way to determine if it's rigged right. or not. Right, yeah, just like in cool. real life, yeah. Um, there's a pig calling contest, uh, other than just going, hey, come here, pig. 
you know? Yeah, I know some players that would just do that. But that that, we get that staff. Remember that that staff that oh, calls yeah, the, right. the farm animals? That would be an awesome one to do. Yeah. Um, but this thing is, is chock full of everything from face painting to what type of food you'd serve. Yeah. So, and again, awesome. You get hungry when you read this, so be careful. Um, but, like, they go into detail, like, the different things that you can even drink or eat at the festival. So I like this because sometimes when you're put on the spot and a player's like, hey, what can I eat here? What can I drink here? You yeah, at least kind of have this list to fall back on. Mini pies made by halflings. Yeah. You know, you don't want to go with those. She does also add two new backgrounds, a <laughs> carny background. Yep. And which the is mummer. One. And the mummer. I don't even know what a mummer is. What's a mummer? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, well, it's basically someone who's like a, like a performer. Um, ah, I yeah, see. Yeah, like a traveling performer. Okay, where good. The, where the carny is your typical like, hey, you know, give pipe, pipe. shoot the duck, win a yeah, prize. Right. Yeah, So they say. Oh yeah. Um, yes. But I really like this because you can even develop maybe like new NPCs or new even player characters if you need to. Just based off of this like content itself. And she even gives you holidays that you can run in here and shows you how to create your own holidays for your gods. Yes, holidays are also very important to your campaign. Uh, me and Tony, we like to stress that when you're making a world, history and lore is so important to creating you know a, a more fleshed out environment for your players. Mm -hmm. And holidays are a great way to kind of like express that without having to like, oh, go to the dungeon and find this ancient book. You know? Right. Or going to the temple because right. it's, yeah. you, know, you know, this day for that. Right. So, I mean, this, this is a great supplement. You can pick it up on the DMs Guild. Uh, it is it is 39 pages long. It's got exotic creature charts. It's got all sorts of really awesome things. Ashley May is very, very prolific when it comes to... Uh, writing out and theming things. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank you again, Ashley, for this one. It's really, really awesome. We're probably going to be using it at our Ren Fair in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, that's right. It, it, that's a celebration in of itself, so we'd love to try it out, actually. <laughs> you can always catch our bi-weekly stream every other Tuesday. Uh, bi-weekly has two meanings. Um, <laughs> <laughs> every other Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, The Maw, which will be appearing over in that corner over there. Mm -hmm. I think there it is. Um, and you can definitely send in your stuff because we like to play test your material live on stream. Mm -hmm. And as always, we do want to thank all of our Patreons for supporting us up until now. Uh, it does help with a lot of the equipment that you see here. Uh, and every dollar that is donated does go to a good cause. Uh, we try to use it wisely on getting new equipment, new content to review, and things like that. So we do appreciate it. If you want to support us, you can follow the link down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe. We always have to say that. It's yeah, down there in the corner. Yeah. Uh, hit the little notification bell if you want to be alerted. We do send out a lot of videos, so if you're not crazy about being alert, don't worry. Just stop on back by every <laughs> couple days. And remember, the best campaigns are always the ones that are home-brewed. So until next time, keep, keep brewing. brewing.